Now the sun is just starting to climb up over the treetops. And it's gonna be a beautiful day, that's plain to see. Welcome to Bill Dance Outdoors, America's most popular and longest running TV fishing show. Now I'm going fishing with Bill Dance today. Have you ever noticed how a child just seems to be full of questions? How? Why? When? Where? <laughs> they just want to know everything. You know, their little minds are just jam full. Sadly, somehow, as we grow older, some of us lose our quest for questions. We think we know it all, and unfortunately, we may even stop learning and therefore improving. You know, this has got to be a gloomy state of affairs for the angler who thinks he knows it all. Is fishing not boring to the know-it-all? <laughs> Boy, let me tell you, that sure isn't something I'd know, simply because I try to learn something on every trip. Now, many times I leave the water with questions, and in turn, fishing has never, ever been boring, even for someone like me who's been at it for <laughs> over 200 years. And with that said, tell you what, Let's go fishing. So, with questions in mind, we're going to be sharing some mighty good ones with you with some newfound fishing knowledge. Like this one here. A fella asked me this question just a few weeks ago. So you still use marker buoys with today's advanced GPS units on your boat? Absolutely. I wouldn't leave home without them. Now, I don't use them to mark the exact place or spot I'm fishing, but I do use them as a reference point for boat position. Now, let's say I'm fishing a location 300 yards offshore and I catch a bass and the wind's blowing. Naturally, I want to stay off that spot, so I'll toss a marker buoy out so I can position my boat back on that exact spot where I caught the fish and possibly catch more. And if you should lose something overboard, like let's say your rod and reel, you can toss the buoy out and possibly recover lost items. Whoa, buddy. How you doing? It's a cold morning. Got a little spunk to you. That old river bug stuck in your face. Come on around here. I don't want to get my hands in that cold water if I don't have to. It is cold. How you doing? There we go, baby. I'll put you back. I've got this thing rigged just with a lead head. There's a lot of ways to rig this thing. I could fish it with a slip sinker and peg it. I could put it on the back of a, a jig with a skirt. But I've had good success just putting it on a lead head and just fishing it. But it's a tremendous bait. It's Bass Pro Shops four and a quarter river bug. And I'm using a black and blue flake. It is a great bait. When I'm fishing it through these dead pad stems, you can see the bonnet right here. It's fallen off the lily pad, and it's just it's dropped down in about three, four feet of water. If you look out through there, you can see the tops are still on some of them. But it's created a lot of cover out through this pad field. Now I've got a bow mount transducer on my trolling motor. I'm in about four feet of water, three and a half to four feet of water. And you can see those pads, how the bonnets have fallen off. They're dead, but they're still productive. Look at all that cover there. I'm using a 3 16th ounce lead head. I don't want it to fall real fast. I'm just gliding it over the top of those pad stems and over the top of those dead pads. Hill Dance Outdoors is sponsored in part by Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Your adventure starts here. Rebel, catch fish anywhere. And by Mercury Marine, 
Go boldly. Today's conditions log is brought to you by Mercury Marine. Go boldly. That fish, I mean, I barely felt him hit it. Okay, there we go. He liked the bug, didn't he? Pretty shape fish. See you, buddy. Here's a good one about spooling line on your reel. Why is it important to put the precise amount of line on a reel? Well, when you fail to fill your reel spool, it requires more revolutions of the handle to take up line. What this means is your lure speed is going to be slower when you begin your retrieve after a long cast than it will be as it gets closer to the rod tip. If you overfill your spool, it's apt to backlash. There's a good one. Oh, look here. Hello, Tuffy. Come on back, I'll let you go. Stay off. There you go. Ah. Boy, I love to trick them in cold water, and I'm tricking them with a mighty good bait. This time of the year, it's just slow fishing, slow presentation. Those bites are extremely light. That's why you need a sensitive tip rod feel. And of course, I'm using braided line. Now, the particular braided line I'm using, this is 30 pound uh, super braid. It's strand, but it looks like white line, but it's a fluorescent blue. I can see it extremely well. Clear blue fluorescent. The visibility is good, but this 30 pound, has got about an eight pound mono diameter. And on the end of it, I've got about a 20 inch section of fluorocarbon leader. But I can see a, a strike, the line, I can see it. A hit, the line will flick, I can see it, but I really like it. Moving along, got an email from a fisherman recently who wondered why at certain times of the year, why are there so many different shallow water patterns on a lake? Well, the primary drawing card for bass is always food. That's right, it's always food. Now, when you're fishing shallow patterns, bait fish spread out more. And guess what? So do the bass. In deep water, forage is more condensed. So the bass always tend to concentrate and deeper patterns are fewer. Also, deep water fish are much more dependable than shallow water fish and are not nearly as affected with weather changes. You ready for another question? Well, here's a nifty one, especially if you've got a small boat. Just how handy are those power pole micro anchors? Handy as the fins on a fish. Now anglers who fish small lakes and lightweight boats are going to love this product. It's an anchoring system that weighs less than a few pounds that mounts or clamps on the transom of your boat. 
and is recommended for boats that weigh up to 1,500 pounds. Now the eight foot anchor shaft deploys at a rate of 1.2 feet per second. Like I said, you got a small boat, this product is handy as a pocket on a shirt. Today's show is brought to you in part by Quantum Rods and Reels. Quantum, performance tuned. Mystic Lubricants, lubrication domination. And Tracker Boats, fish the finest. Today's equipment log is brought to you by Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light saltwater, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Today's show is sponsored in part by Berkeley Catch More Fish. Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. And by Garmin. Fight your fish, not your fish finder. Go, man. Tug, 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 tug. I mean, he was right under it. I'd worked it all the way in. Didn't take it. Pretty fish, isn't it? See you around. Just about to reel it up my belt and go. Doom. Okay, here's a question. Well, actually, it's a Facebook question we received. Bill, you recently discussed a survey about rod lengths and actions. Also, a survey about soft plastic hooks. Can you show that again? Well, I sure can. That little survey you're referring to was recently compiled and I'm glad you found it interesting. I sure did. If you could only use one rod length in action for all your bass fishing, what would it be? First, the length. Six foot, six and a half, seven foot. Well, about 15% of the people surveyed said six foot, 60% said six and a half, and 25% said seven foot. I'd go along with that. Now for the action. About 35% selected medium, 45% preferred medium heavy, and 20% said heavy. What about soft plastic hooks? Listen to this. Offset shanks, 18%. Straight shank, 2%. And wide gap, 30%. And extra wide gap, 50%. Now, since we're on percentages, let me share one more with you. The good folks at Zebco Quantum tell me narrow spool bait casting reels outsell wider spools 65 to 35%. Why? Well, they're more compact and they're lighter. Interesting stuff. Run top. Look, he's got that black blotch. You got it in a couple of places. That's just in the pigmentation. Doesn't hurt the fish. Got it on his lip too. See you there, boy. Let me show you an illustration I created of a small lily pad field set up prone to hold fish during the summer months when the pads are alive and green. There could be a fish 
at spot 1 and 10 if it's deep enough. Definitely fish the corners at spot 2 and 8 and point 4 could also be excellent. In fact, any point that extends out into the lake might also be good, like number 2, and any pockets like 3 and 6 could be absolutely fantastic, and across the mouth of the pocket at spot 5. Let me point out, the same areas and the same spots that you just looked at on that illustration can also be productive during the cold winter months when the pads are dead and have sunk. You can actually see the submerged cover and make out the edges and your graph can be a major help that will allow you to fish the fringes along the, the outer edges of the pads and polarized sunglasses will help you too. And after you learn to do that, that will help you when you move out into the open water like we have right here. The Bill Dance question and answer of the week is brought to you by Bill Dance exclusive rods by Quantum. Whether you're fishing for panfish, bass, catfish, or light salt water, we have an action for you. Available at Bass Pro Shops and Cabela's. Bill, how much time do you spend on buying a new lure? Well, I really think a lot of expensive baits are overrated. A bass strikes whatever's available that appears to them to be forged, whether it costs $4 or $18. Like I've said before, we spend way too much time thinking about buying baits than bass do worrying about striking them. Bass are predators, not bankers. They'll never be concerned with the cost of a lure. Today's show is sponsored in part by Millennium Marine, a new class of comfort. And by Garmin Force Trolling Motors, fish with force. Closed captioning provided by PowerPole, the original shallow water anchor. Today's product tip is brought to you by Garmin and their GPS map series, chart plotter, sonar combos. With advanced sonar technology like Chirp and exclusive Panoptics all-seeing sonar, you'll spend less time finding your fish. No, that's not an antenna. It's my power pole micro anchor that holds boats or anchors boats up to 17 feet or 1,500 pounds which is perfect for this rig. The all-electric micro drives the spike up to eight feet deep and comes with two remote controls. And since it's made by the good folks at PowerPole, it has the same fast deployment and silent operation and unbelievable holding power. Come be a part of Bill Dance Digital. Join us on Facebook, Instagram, Twitter, and YouTube. Follow us. See ya. That was a chunky little fish. Okay, you ready for another question? All right, here's one about your electronics that we're gonna let our good friend, Jason Christie, Garmin's Pro Fisherman answer. Jason, what's the benefits of Panoptics for you and will you be using the PS22? Traveling the country, I have to learn a lake very, very quickly and Panoptics allows me to see out in front of the boat before the boat gets there. And with the new PS22, I literally have two views with one transducer. I can use the live view forward when I'm in search mode and switch to live view down when I find the fish and go to catch mode. Thanks, Jason, that's a mighty good answer. Okay, got a question here about hooks. Bill, what's the purpose of the thicker hooks versus thinner hooks when fishing soft plastic lures? 
Well, some fishermen prefer thicker hooks for pitching, flipping, and close range jarring hook sets in heavy cover areas, where thinner light wire hooks will penetrate quicker and more easily when you're fishing, let's say, deeper water or long cast with smaller mono line weights. Now, I personally prefer light wire wide gap hooks the majority of the time, like gamakatsu's offset round bends. Let me tell you why I like this little fella, the river bug. Let me tell you why I like it so much. It features a compact meaty body with forward facing rings that push water out as you move it along, creating a living motion that resembles something bass really, really like. And it's a bait that I've caught a bunch of fish on. Plus, like I said earlier, you can rig it and fish it so many different ways. You can uh, Texas rig them, you can Carolina or drop shot them. Uh, you can put them on a, a lead head, a jig head like we're doing today. Bass absolutely love them. That's strong fish right there too. Size that. That's a pretty one there. Whew. See ya. You know, that is a lot of fun what we've done today. I love fishing this way, especially in this cold water <clears throat> and catching fish like we've done. And I'll tell you something else. If there's one thing I've certainly learned about this board, is that there's a lot of bass fishermen out there that'll go to a lot of trouble to learn just how to catch a bass or two. And if it takes asking questions to find out how, well, that's what'll happen. Like I've said before, it's how we learn. Thanks so much for tuning in, and we'll catch you next time. Thanks for watching Bill Dance Outdoors. Join us here again next week. No, I've gone fishing with Bill Dance.